What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson, and we are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate business into a life of freedom. Uh, and we have no guests today, so we're talking about a few things. Number one, why the key to all sales and marketing is relationships. We're going to give you some specific examples and deal with a couple of questions and situations that we've seen uh, come up both in our own um, in our own worlds and also in the uh, Facebook groups that we're all a part of. Some things that kind of fit that theme and reminded me of that today so we'll go over that we're also taking your questions uh, both from the Facebook group uh, lead gen scripts objections and live so the junior grandmaster himself is with me in the co-pilot seat where he so belongs in the box far far away from me Greg Matiano <laughs> Greg what up jackass <laughs> far 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 away from me because ugh, getting close to that, that that's horrible stuff that's right well I just mean when we sit beside each other like we were a couple weeks ago in Detroit you make me look like I'm I don't know, Lupa. Tom Cruise size, like fun, like fun size, when so in reality, cool. I'm six foot tall, and you're just an extraordinarily large human being. Man bear beast, that is what I would say. Exactly. Um, yeah, Frank Frank is a man bear. That guy is a freaking yes. tank of a human being. Yes. Good Frank, Lord. the CEO of Viral Marketing, is a, oh, is a man bear. God, he's a man bear. If I have to look up, look up to him and say hi, I'm like, damn, you're huge. Um, <laughs> and if he stood in front of you, you couldn't tell you were there. <laughs> I know. That's the weirdest thing, dude. <laughs> that is not easy. I'm 240 pounds, man. <laughs> how, does, how, does, how do you hide a 240-pound man? Put yeah. Frank in front of him. Have him stand behind Frank. That's right. <laughs> oh, almighty. That is actually really funny. Uh, dude, so I'm coming off of last week. I went on to The Grind. Uh, it's a really cool other podcast talking about kind of like the grind of business. Business, right yeah. and uh, Jason and Joey they're the two hosts of it they're hilarious dude they are carbon copy are there there are doppelgangers they're legitimately our doppelgangers okay. um, and they actually they modeled their show after our show like our interaction our banter and like when yeah. I first I didn't know that when I first went on and uh -huh. I'm like God, this seems familiar. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, we, 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 uh, we, we did it after you guys. So we're going to get Matt. We're going to book them for the show, get them come on. They'll be a blast. Yeah. They're in uh, North Dakota. Uh, don't you know? <laughs> okay. uh, but, yeah, it, it was awesome. You know, this last uh, this last Saturday, I, uh, you know, we, we were talking about relationships and sales and marketing is all about the relationships. I, uh, I buried my grandmother on Saturday. Yeah. Um, and uh, didn't know didn't know quite how I was going to handle that. Uh, surprisingly, kept all that bear, bottled up pretty effectively. I don't know when that's all going to become pouring out. It's going to be a shit show probably when I'm talking to mm -hmm. you. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Matt's going to be like Matt's going to be like and hang up the phone. Okay. Bye -bye. <laughs> okay. The emotional bank account is dry. Um, yeah. But you know, you know, it is about relationships. You should have seen the the, the, the amount of people. They showed up in the amount of love that my grandmother put into the universe and what she, everybody wanted to come back and give back to her and, you know, celebrate her life. It was, it was really an interesting thing. A lot of people, they'll go through life. They could be very successful. They could do a lot of things very positively. Um, but they didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't build the relationships. They were, they, they were transactional, you know, both mm -hmm. in business and in personal parts of their life. And I think what we're going to talk about today is how that sales and marketing is a relationship based business. That's one of the things that we teach in 36 to life with Hank Avick uh, that I coach and any other coaches in 36 to life we talk about building a relationship and how getting that referral you know is around that other human being I mean that's how Matt and I met I mean I was referred to viral by someone I trusted therefore I paid them 2,000 up front and 575 a month and I still still do that because of mm -hmm. the relationship I have with Frank with Scott Solari with you Matt with Reed my coach and the list goes on so it's interesting how if you want to build your business more, get more personal. Like from uh, Rockstar Connect, dude. So mm -hmm. I have all the cards from Rockstar Connect. I have um, Gal Tony right here. Had a chance to talk with her for a while on the on, at the event. We built a relationship. I mean, very fledging, but she was mm -hmm. a really cool chick. And so, like, she, she we're not Facebook friends, and we're commenting on each other's stuff. And we're, whenever it's the right time, she's going to refer me to her friend or family member or herself. It's because I had a relationship. I sat there and had, you know, two bourbons, ate some, you know, ate some lamb and kicked back and made a friendship. So, yeah, anyways, that's a very long tail entry to our podcast. But it's something that has to do with, you know, something that was very deep with me, with my grandmother and everything else. So if you guys have a grandma still... Call her, tell her you love her, give her a hug if you're in the vicinity. Because when they go, they're not coming back. It's yeah. really shitty. Yeah, it is, man. I'm very sorry to hear about that. And hope that your parents and, and you are hanging in there. I know it's a tough time. So, Yeah, you know, yeah. usually I drink water. 
what do you think's in here today? It's the happy <laughs> juice. <laughs> happy juice. I'm sure. It's lemon water. <laughs> oh, no, man. All right. So let's take a couple of questions here real quick. Um, this is from Shabi in the, in the Facebook uh, group, Lead Gen Scripts and Objections. If you're not already a member and you've been hiding under a rock somewhere, uh, go join immediately. That is our good friend Aaron Wittenstein's um, Facebook group. They are at close to 45,000, if not over. So it's the probably the second biggest group in real estate, which is fantastic. It's all based on Legion. Are they? All right, so here's the, here's the question. Do you have business Instagram accounts? I started one a few days ago. Would love to follow other realtors for inspiration. So Greg, I know you probably got a couple under your hat um, that you would recommend for people to follow if they want to see the the right way to do real estate on Instagram. Yeah, guys, go go follow my dear good friend uh, Sarah Johnson. She's out of Calgary, Canada. She's a bubbly little creature, which I got. To, Matt, remind me, I got to book her. We're gonna get her on the show again. Mm -hmm. She's fantastic. At, she has fourteen thousand followers and growing uh, quickly. But she does. She she builds a brand around it. Um, also, my good friend Stevie Hahn uh, out in Florida, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, Stevie does a really good job with – both of these girls do a really good job with their colors. They, they pick a color and they stick with their color. They, build, they pick their brand, they stick with their brand, and then they go from there. Like Hank Avick, he has orange, right? The orange is his shtick. That's his gig. Even his Jeep is orange or partly orange. His hat is orange. His background is orange. Everything's orange. So when you think of orange, you think of, think of Hank. You yeah. think of – you see Sarah, and it's like a light aqua blue. I don't even know what aqua blue looks like, but it's a light blue, and she has it everywhere. You know, Stevie has her color, and it's everywhere. So I think for for business from Instagram, and Matt, you jump in on this, and I want to hear your opinion. I know, shocker, right? I want to hear your opinion. Um, but <laughs> small I smile. Just, I, I was, well, I was sitting in my stand-up <laughs> chair, so I had to pick myself up. It's a long way down to the ground. I had to pick myself up <laughs> off the floor. It's like four feet down. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like you're totally standing. That's so awesome. You're actually sitting down again. Yeah, that's correct. Um, but guys, don't just post photos of open houses. Don't. don't that's really boring. Um, you know what? You got to be more creative. You got to sell the entire neighborhood. And so, Matt, curiosity, out of pure curiosity, what would you post on a business Instagram account if you were a real estate agent today? If, in a, besides posting open houses, what are three things that you would post? Because I would probably do. The neighborhoods, like interesting things about the neighborhoods, like you playgrounds or walking paths or you know, historical sites, something like that that's in the in the area. Um, I would post 360 photos. Um, you can do with you know, Insta, 3, Insta 360, which is this thing right here. So let me bust this thing out for you guys. This is the the Insta 360. You can get it you know, on the iPhones. You can also get one for the Androids. Post cool photos like that on Instagram. But uh, what about you, man? What would you post? Um, I would probably, uh, and I know it's not an Instagram account, but probably the best person I've seen at running a, a social media account, a business account that actually generates a really great brand and real leads is Jerry Pincus. Uh, so Jerry Pincus, real estate experts out in uh, Myrtle Beach. I interviewed him a couple years ago with uh, Jenny Williams uh, when I was doing webinars with her. And he's got something like, and I don't want to exaggerate it just for the sake of it, but I'm pretty sure it was in, I'm thinking it was in the, the couple hundred thousand followers on his Facebook page. And one of the fun, the fun things that he does and the reason why it's grown so much is because he will take, you know, uh, essentially memes, little quotes, and he'll make his own social media memes right so like beach living and then it'll be an actual picture of myrtle beach not just a random beach right it's actually mm. where he lives and he makes his own memes uh, and he doesn't spend you know like more time than any of us really have i mean he's, he's intentional about it but he's gotten quick at building them and and of course now we have a million apps i mean we talked about a few with uh with dave fresquez uh, i believe last week and so the the process of making them is is so easy that anyone can do it. The question is, what do you put on them? And that's who I would look to for inspiration is go look up Jerry Pincus, real estate experts in Myrtle Beach. Look at his Facebook page. It has, you know, six figure. His follower numbers are in the six figures. I would look at what he's posting and model that. Uh, I do love the idea of like keeping your brand colors consistent. Uh, so that people kind of, it, it makes sense for them to follow you across multiple properties. And then when they go, when you tell them, hey, click the link in my bio to go to my website to do this certain home search or whatever, they go to the website and it makes sense to them subconsciously because of the color scheme matches what they're used to seeing on Instagram. So it kind of maintains the trust and the credibility. So I think all of those are good things. Uh, in addition to some of the, like the community oriented things that you can model off of Jerry Pincus, 
I would also do what probably Sarah and, and Stevie and, and people like Rod Watson are doing on Instagram, which is just give people an inside peek at what it's like to be you and post a picture of you out touring properties, looking at that multi-million dollar home, dropping by the sports car dealership to talk to your buddy that sells, you know, uh, Lamborghinis or, or all, you know, all the fun stuff that Rod's doing with his local TV show. I mean, there's just, I mean, if you're involved in any way in real estate, there's got to be something you're doing every day that you can snap a quick photo of that people would find interesting. Now, for me, if I was to do an Instagram feed, oh God. Here, here's what my Instagram would, feed would be, Greg. Me <laughs> reading a book. <laughs> me hunched over a laptop working and me i think the most fun that people would have following my instagram feed is what starbucks is matt at today <laughs> let's that, go let's go hashtag mama. hashtag where in the world is matt which which starbucks <laughs> is matt at hashtag cookie monster hashtag you know yeah, yeah. starbucks yeah but yeah it, that's, it is interesting i mean you people always i think the, the big hang-up and i'm guilty of it too very much guilty of it like you did you, we made a joke about it about uh, not being that interesting because we're just working it's not like you're out yeah, like, Ta -da! <laughs> here yeah, i exactly. am world <laughs> no. wouldn't consider i don't have a rock star looking lifestyle <laughs> not Let's put yet. it that way not yet but i mean i think that a lot of us but people we have to understand that nobody really gives a shit i mean if they're interested in you then you doing you is going to be interesting to people that are out there that want to know about you and if you're not interesting fuck man go become interesting like i'm going to make matt do a drinking show we're going to do one show every 15 minutes or 20 minutes we're taking a shot if you guys like that put comments in there if you guys want to see us do a drinking show i think that'd be oh, hilarious oh god it would be a Friday show, and then we just like just ooze into the weekend. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> just like get back, well, <laughs> we're out. That's um, right. But I, I a mean, drinking a, show. A drinking show. We should do. We should get a panel of people, all of us drinking, all of us doing it on a Friday, just knowing we're just gonna check out for the rest of the day, but see what kind of weird shit comes out of our mouths after a couple of shots take place. I mean, that should, that could be really a fascinating show. Yeah. Just, just me though. But um, yeah. but yeah, Instagram is a fun account. I uh, what I do to hack that most of the time, like I have to think about this shit to yeah. to really to really remember to post to Instagram. So like I'll go to my Instagram right now. Um, go back to this, and I mean I I I posted like today I posted this if you guys can see it. I just posted posted a picture of my new EXP card, right? Nice. You know, just to kind of see you know see what's going on, and I have like. 20 people that like it that's more than most times um <laughs> it's about consistency and just having a smattering of your different life in there now you girls that are way better looking than us guys you're going to get a lot better response you're gonna get some creepers you know naturally but right um you're going to get a better response by by working with image-based you know marketing mm -hmm. and i think you know so you should work that angle and not be afraid of it either i mean if yeah. you get if you get a straight up stalker you know fucking kick his ass but uh but I mean, start leveraging the assets that you have available to you. I mean, I, yeah. no, all, all puns intended. <laughs> all puns, <laughs> really, all puns intended. Okay. Uh, well, let's take a step back, and I, there's a couple of other questions I want to dive into, and then I want to get to the main thing that we want to talk about, which is all about relationships and kind of a, a lens that you can look out on the world of building your sales and marketing. Uh, business um, and and why I always start with relationships. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Greg, how do people book a call with you, and why should they do so? Guys, book a thirty minute call with me at bookmcdaniel.com. So again, that's bookmcdaniel.com. Guys, if you want to, if you've been thinking about maybe making a, a brokerage shift, uh, come over to EXP, join our national flat, our team, um, and I'll show you guys how to make three types of income: commission income, passive commission, commission income, and long term stock. Uh, in, in EXP, how you can have a 401k uh, and have complete autonomy, do whatever you want, whenever you want, and, but have a national brokerage. If you guys have a small brokerage and you want to come over, uh, we can talk about that as well. You can bring your entire brokerage over, um, and EXP will take off accounting and legal, so your bottom line will rise. So again, just come on over, join our team, see if it fits. BookMcDaniel.com. That is where you. That's where the magic happens, Matt. That is where the magic happens, as they say in cribs. Sure. Mm -hmm. is. <laughs> That's where the magic happens. Okay. All right. So, uh, so the the question, one of the questions that caught my eye was, uh, and this, of course, we're hearing this more and more on the West Coast. This is from uh, Matt Vicenti, Vincenti. It says, "What's your response when a seller says I could list with Redfin for one percent? Why pay you three percent?" Now, right off the bat, that tells me that's a savvier 
uh, seller client, if they're at, if they're specifically using that phrasing, like why would I pay you 3% when I can list with Redfin for one, they're already kind of, they probably already have a better understanding of the commission structures than we give our clients credit for because they're not asking, well, why, why, you know, why can I pay Redfin 100%, you know, 1% and I don't have to pay you six or seven, right? Because if they, if they say that, you know, right off the bat, they don't understand the commission split breakdowns of seller agent, buyer agent and all that stuff. So, so let's say you're running into someone, they're a little bit more savvy. Let's say they, they either have someone that's in real estate or they used to be in real estate, Greg, and you are, you know, handling that specific objection with Redfin. How do you handle it? Um, I might do a little bit differently than maybe some other agents would do it. Uh, but I, I would probably try to do the, the pull away method right off the bat. And I say, well, then, mm -hmm. you know what, maybe I'm just not your, you know, not the right agent for you. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're willing to work with, if you want someone that's just going to be a discount broker, I'm not a discount broker. And I respect the fact that if you want that, but you're going to pay for what you get. So do you want a professional team to handle every aspect of the transaction? Or would you like to muddle through it and maybe hopefully you know cross all fingers and toes get through this without any litigation or any potholes that you don't know are coming down the pipe you know did you know in no disrespect to you know discount brokers but you know they are what they are so you just tell me what you want and if that's what you're looking for you know i appreciate your time mm -hmm. and i will get up and i will walk out of that house because i'm not going to sit there and beg someone for my commission if they don't see the value then two things took place either i didn't present myself adequately to the point where they feel that I am worth, that my team is worth the money. And two, they're gonna be a pain in the fucking ass because they're gonna nickel and dime your ass on everything. And it's gonna be a nightmare of a deal. So you can either you know, protect your commissions um, or you can use, oh Matt, or you, can use, or you can use this script. You know what? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think you should pay 6%. That's why my commission is only two and a half percent. We get to figure out what we're gonna pay the other side. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually used that uh, Friday. I got, a, I did a, I had a lady call me back from my my prospecting calls that I do. Mm -hmm. And Gloria, wonderful woman, her husband just passed. A lot of emotions are going on, so we sat there an hour and a half with her. And I, she asked me what the commission was. And you know what? And I told her that exact script: two and a half. We'll figure out what we're going to pay the other side. Mm -hmm. She stayed on that two and a half. So you could combat it with that. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys, respect yourself, respect your time. Look, if you're a new agent, and, and don't waste time. What did, uh, what did, wasn't it, um, who was that, Matt? Uh, I think Aaron Wittenstein turned down his first listing appointment in uh, West, Westchester when he first started because of something like that, didn't he? Uh, I don't remember. It's yeah, it's definitely possible. I, I mean, he's not gonna. He definitely does not discount his commission. No. I know that. No, no um, he does not. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, I, I, that may. I don't know if it was Aaron, but I remember somebody saying they turned down their first their first listing, like their first, you know, not a million dollar listing, but it would have been a very nice, healthy, and very needed commission check um, if they could have yes. got that listing. But they turned it down because they wanted to a, to discount it. Um, so yeah. So my. My thing, the, the way that I would handle that is very similar, and I do handle it because I, I get that question a lot, I mean, even on the podcast business side of things, right, because I have a very specific system. We have a package that we sell, uh, and for some people, it's great, and it's amazing, and it's awesome, and it takes the burden off of their staff, and it's like right in the sweet spot. Uh, for others, it's more than they want to spend, right? And so, I mean, the, the way that I would approach that um, is that you basically start off by saying something like a, a total Chris Lockhead thing, which is like, well, the, the, re, the, the fact that you've asked that question means that right off the bat, we're kind of having the wrong conversation because clearly I have not done a good enough job of explaining why I'm completely different than a Redfin agent. We're really not even talking about two things. If all I was going to do was do what a Redfin agent would do, then absolutely you go with them because they're going to charge less. But I don't charge what a Redfin agent does, you know, does because I don't do what a Redfin agent do does. I don't just put a sign on the ground and then have a, you know, a couple of marketing things that we do and release it out to my buyers and cross mm -hmm. my fingers and hope that it sells, right? So. What I haven't done a good job of, of doing clearly is explaining what we're going to do to launch your home into the market to put as many buyers through there and generate as much demand and as much of a bidding war as we possibly can to drive up the price of the home that we eventually sell it for so that you put as much money in your pocket at the end of the day so my commission becomes irrelevant, right? Because if, mm -hmm. I, if, if I make more, but it's because I'm investing more time, money, and energy into getting your home sold, and in the end, you get a higher price and you put more money in your pocket, that's really what's most important in getting you to the next step. So that's why we've developed the system that we have. Now the system isn't right for everybody. 
Mm -hmm. You know, there's some things that we have to do together to get your home ready for that type of blitz that we're going to do. Like we're going to do, you know, 300 calls in the area around your home to invite the neighbors to a special neighbors only open house. We're going to run targeted, hyper targeted demographic Facebook ads to go after every potential buyer within five or 10 miles of your place that we believe fits the, the demographic profile of the person who would buy your home. We're going to call the other top agents in the area who we know work with the types of buyers who are going to be looking for a home like yours. Like all this, like if you just go bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam. And then you refer them back yeah. to like your 150 step marketing plan. Like it will absolutely blow someone like that out of the water to where it is a very clear choice. It's little service, little commission, and lots of service for a little bit more commission. It's not going to be a, it's not going to be an A, B. They do the same thing and this guy's cheaper. So why should I go with you? And I think to me, that's a much better way to handle it than the classic. Well, if you negotiate my commission down, how am I going to negotiate for, to, you know, for you on the other side? The unfortunate thing is that negotiation is not, I don't know, it's, it's, should sellers care about it? Absolutely. Is it a big deal and is it a big part of, of, of an agent's job? Absolutely. Greg, when you go in, how much does a negotiation come up as a question that sellers have about your skill set? Never really when it comes to skill set. I mean, they I bring in my brag book, you know, so I have all the stuff that's outlined kind of what we do, how awesome we're doing it. We're adding yeah. more pages to our past sales. We're adding more, you know, quotes for, 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 for past clients, you know, yeah. stuff along those lines just to make it a more impactful, you know, presentation. But very rarely they're like, hmm, so are you qualified? It's like, yeah. well, obviously I am because I'm fucking sitting here. You know, you <laughs> called me in because you thought me I thought I was somewhat you know, competent as human being. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it really never really ever comes up, um, yeah. which is a all. shame because it absolutely should. And it should be something that the sellers care very much about. Like they should be questioning your qualifications. They should be questioning, well, if they were really savvy, they'd ask you a question, especially in this market, like, well, how much over the listing price do you typically sell for? Because any, yeah. any agent right now can put a home on the market and sell it for a hundred and you know, something percent of the listing price. So how mm -hmm. much do you Right. So I, I interviewed a guy named Aaron Hendon over on the team building podcast a couple of weeks back and they track everything. And so they can call up somebody and legitimately say like, hey, we sell every home, you know, this year or, or last year or something like that. I think it was like their 2017 numbers say, look, we sell every home we list for about 106 percent of the price that we ask for. it. That's three percent more than the average agent. Now, what that tells you is that every agent in the area is selling for over list price, right? 103%. But still, mm -hmm. they are legitimately over the average, right? So they have the numbers to back them up to say, look, not only do we get more money in your pocket at the end, but we actually sell on average for 106% of, of what we set the asking price of the home at. Uh, and so if you can go in with something like that, like that's a much more tangible way to combat that objection than, than a quote objection handler. Yeah, I just I just laughed at myself on that one because <laughs> so is it saying that you're really good at sales or are you saying you underprice your homes? <laughs> what's, that, what's that saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, what does it matter in the end? <laughs> if it ends up driving up, if it, if it creates a uh, if it creates an auction feel and you get a higher price as a result, that's a good thing. But yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 I mean, I there's totally definitely there's definitely if, if you're a really savvy person, you understand statistics, you can probably pick that apart a little bit. <laughs> but I mean, no one's going to do that. They just hear like, oh, wow, you price your home effectively. And then you get people to overbid a bit on it, which they're, they're all of a sudden ding, 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 ding. It's money signs in their brain. So they're like, I want to use Matt Johnson at, you know, Remax. He sits next to Bob at Remax. Fucking Bob. Yeah. Um, you know, and you Paul, don't like Paul Bob. is watching today. Um, yes, he is. Paul has, a, Paul has a great point. He says being able to effectively solve problems as they come up has been exceptionally more useful skill than my ability to negotiate. And Paul, that, that is a great point. Unfortunately, both of those things are very difficult to get across as a competitive advantage or the reason why somebody should hire you as an agent versus somebody else because those are both very, very intangible skills to prove that you have. Marketing, the, the, your ability or your plan to market and launch their home into the, into the marketplace is something much more tangible. Right yeah. now, they, homeowners absolutely should care very deeply about your ability to solve problems as they come up. The problem is the very reason why real estate agent as a, as a profession exists is because people don't want to know about the problems. If they wanted to know about them and they wanted to deeply understand them, they wouldn't hire us. They would, they would do it themselves and some do, right? Because they're confident they can handle the problems that come up. So you have to, we have to keep in mind that what we think they should care about 
is not what they want to care about and it's not what's important to them and we have to deal with reality on reality's terms. So if we go in and we try to make a presentation or a consultation based on what we think they should care about, that's going to fall flat. We have to go in and present or consult and advise based on what they actually care about, which is, do I trust you? Do you love my home? Do you believe it's an awesome home that everybody and their mother should want to buy? And mm -hmm. what are you going to do to get me buyers in the place that's going to get me more money in my pocket? So we just have to we have to deal with reality on reality's terms. Yeah, I mean, when I go into listing presentations, um, you know, I I I I start ask I ask them right off the bat, you know, what what are some things that you guys want to cover up front? I mean, because I have my presentation here, but I want to make sure we hit your bullet points before I break into everything. I know, we I have. started so using that. Who, points? who was that, Greg, that, that brought that know. up on the show? I, I think it was Pasquale. It was Pasquale. Was it Pasquale? When we were doing the behind the scenes sessions with, uh, with some of the people in our mastermind crew. Yeah, he came to one of the coaching sessions and started yeah. off with a line like that, and you and I both stole it, and we use it all the time. <laughs> Fuck yeah, we stole that thing. <laughs> Every time I'm, I show up I'm to a client a update call, pretty much I start off with that. Like I start off with, hey, like I've got a few things I'd like to cover and it's X, Y, and Z, but I would love to just see, let's make sure that, that you know, what would you like to get out of this call? Oh, well, I wanted to make sure we covered, you know, A, B, blah, and blah, C. Blah, 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 blah. Great. Well, uh, let's deal with those first, then we'll cover the few things that I had in mind. And then at the end, I follow up and I ask them again, like, hey, do we cover everything that you wanted to get covered? I've kind of taken care of the stuff that, that I wanted to, to cover, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that we didn't leave anything uh, that fell through the cracks of the things that you wanted to cover and just firm up one more time that you've covered everything that was a, a concern for them. So that's a great thing to steal in a listing consultation. Yeah, I, it, it works like a dream. Absolutely works like mm -hmm. a dream. We got some... Good people that are watching us. You know, Buddy yes. Blake's up here. Buddy, good to see Hello, you, buddy. my friend. Misty, girlfriend, what up? Monica, thank you for the kind words. You're amazing. Mm -hmm. My, you know, hashtag Gail. Gail, Gail what up, girl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to get her on Excited the show. Excited to have you on the show. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a quick question. Aaron Wheelock says, hello, lead gen gurus who specialize in social media lead gen. Any video books or web pages you recommend? Um, I would throw out uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's jab, 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 right hook as the mm. best tactical resource on how to build a social media following and provide value on social media. Um, I would also just like anecdotally just go follow him and uh, Grant Cardone on everything. Mm -hmm. And I mean, those, those are the two best examples of how to be a quote business rock star or what Chris Lockhead would call a business Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> which I love that phrase, which we can debate the merits of that good or bad. But the, oh, but the point is either way it works and it builds a social media following. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to learn more about social media, just go to social media examiner on Facebook. Uh, they have a, um, a Friday show at 10 AM. They have a newsletter. It's amazing. They have a podcast. Amazing. If you guys want to really learn how to do that stuff, go to social media examiner's Facebook page right now, scroll down a little bit and they'll see about, um, you know, hey, you have a whole podcast about how to use video more effectively for social media marketing. Uh, and, you know, you know, Michael Stelzner and all the guys and gals over there really do a good job of breaking it down. There'll be so much content on how to do, use social media from a marketing platform. It'll get a little dizzying. Uh, but just, you know, take a buffet. Pick what you like, leave what you don't, uh, and just grow from that point. Uh, yeah, okay, that, that's all I have on that point. Uh, yes, and I will add, just because Gail pointed it out and she's watching, she's, uh, to go check out and follow Hank mm. uh, Avink on, on Facebook. And she's absolutely right. Hank is a master at leveraging uh, simple tools, uh, Facebook itself, uh, Facebook messages, and live video. Um, and so absolutely. Uh, I don't know that he, um, he's kind of maxed out on friends, but you can follow him. Uh, so make sure that you do that because Hank is a master at doing it both for his own business on the coaching side. He was a master at doing it in the real estate side and still is. Uh, and everybody that he teaches comes out of his trainings more and more effective on social media. Um, mm -hmm. So make sure that you go and follow him. Now, here's the question that I really wanted to get to. This is a this is a big question, and so I'm going to take oh, it in, in some chunks here. I'm nervous, so, Matt. Uh, this is from Jeremy's in the Lead Gen Scription Injections group says, business associate calls uh, me and says, can you take over a large database of high-end past clients and web leads? So the initial response is, well, heck yeah, why not? So here's the wrinkle. It's a database from an office, not a specific agent or even one agent's team. So there's a bunch of past clients in there from like 40 different agents, most of whom have left the business, but you can't exactly be sure which ones have and haven't. Uh, it's all from a neighborhood office in a high-end zip code in a really nice city. 
So the question, is, and then there's the, there's a second slice of that database that's huge. It has just a bunch of like thousands of Zillow, Realtor.com, and Trulia leads that are anywhere from zero to five years old. So the question is like, what do you do with that and all this stuff? And the first thing that I want to point out is that the with a database like that, I, I don't even know if I would call that a database. Essentially, that's a that's a list of suspects, Greg, because if you were the agent that had a a relationship with those past clients, that's a database. Mm. If you can call them up and they know who you are and there's some level of connection, maybe even trust and likability, that is that is a true database. If you were to take that database, the same set of information, and you gave it to another person, and that person calls that list, they have no idea who that person is. There is no trust, there's no likability, there's no connection. To them, while it may be a database to you, if you were, if they were, they were your past clients, to somebody else in the business, it's not really a database. To them, it's really just a list of suspects. And to me, it has to be treated like that. And that's the difference, is a lot of people, they, they I guess, make the mistake or the misconception that because they have a list of contact info or they can pull people's emails or they can scrape people's emails or whatever, that they can have the same effect as someone's database. And of course, it's, it's not true. And the difference between those two scenarios, between an agent calling up their past clients or you calling up somebody else's past clients that have no idea who you are, is there's no relationship. All right, and one of the things, Greg, that we're talking about with, with Hank, Hank, that, that's part of why Hank is a master at social media, because Hank doesn't think in terms of transactions. Hank thinks in terms of relationships. Yeah, that's the whole 36 to life basis on it. And, uh, you know, he does a really good job about it. I mean, like, if I don't talk to him for a couple of days, he'll hit me up and be like, hey, buddy, just thinking about your brother. You know, I value you. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then I hit him back immediately, and I get that little dopamine hit of like, oh, someone likes me. This is so nice. But it is a relationship that he is building with me and a lot of other people in his life. And uh, I'm very guilty of being, you know, very transactional real estate because that's the way I've been taught to do it, you know, you know, and relationship. But a more, majority of it's just it is, it is a relationship no matter what. It's your it's your job to cultivate that relationship. So if it's a cold relationship like I get from my calls, like I went out and saw Gloria, right? I, I was I kind of. I don't know if she's just you know a little bit off that day or what was going on, but she went from 80% going to sell. By the time we left, she was 100% going ready to sell because uh, I had built a a relationship with her. I had given her tools, given her different assets that she could tap into that could help this whole scary transition take place. So she'd get up to Tahoe and live in a Tahoe house and go skiing every day. Mm -hmm. And you know when she when I walked in, she kind of gave me that wonky look, like you are a huge human and uh, you're in my house. And I told her I was going to be the six foot five guy, so I made light of it to start that relationship off in the right in the right foot steps. Um, but the I was able to cultivate it and grow it from there. And now I'm sending her emails and we're exchanging all kinds of information. But I think that long term plays for long term you know longevity in this business is that you need to use send out cards. You know, Gail's an absolute master of send out cards. Um, what, you guys, if you just go follow her and just friend her, she's awesome. And she'll show you what she does. Like I told you, I've showed you guys this a couple of times, you know, my boat card, you know, that was a post on Facebook that I did. She just snatched it and then put, you know, the whole post right in this card. And I keep it on my desk now. Every time I look at it, it, remind, it reminds me of her. Um, but I, you need to learn, you need to learn the language of the clients that you're working with and how do they want to be communicated with and what is what is important to them and build and, and speak their language not your language to them so that they'll find you relevant when the time comes to so be like oh you know matt really does listen to me um or greg really does listen to me or he does he's he's in, he, he's um his values are aligned with my values so on and so forth you get where i'm going with this yeah. But send out cards is a great way to do it. Viral marketing is a great way to do it. Oh, by the way, Matt, dude, check this out. I it was totally blown away. Um, one of my distant, like, like great cousins once removed, what the fuck ever, it's just a relative somewhere in the tree. Um, they're like, hey, Greg, I keep getting your videos, man. I love them. Can I, can I pick your brain about real estate? Yes, you can. Yes, yes, you can. Then my cousin Leah. She just got married to Carter, super cool guy, couple. Um, and they're like, hey, Greg, can you help us buy a house? Fuck yeah, I can, because <laughs> they want to move to the Bay. Her sister, Emma, and her fiance, uh, they're looking for a place. You know, it, it's just, and, and I'm staying in front of them, naturally, I see them all. I made a Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, Emma and Leah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Xander, yeah. Carter, all mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, but awesome. from staying in touch with them, staying out there in front of them with mm -hmm. like, you know, with with the with the viral marketing and with you know the putting the cards. And by the way, Gail, yeah. it would be very proud of me. I had myself on the back. I send out a card, called this lady back. She remembered the card. She told all the other agents to go away, and she said, "I'll call you in two months, Greg." Oh, that's awesome. Yes. So, <laughs> just knock it out of the park success. Yeah, that's what I would do. Well, one of the reasons I was thinking about just the whole relationship thing <clears throat> is uh, I was talking to one of the guys that we're going to have on the show here in the next few weeks, and he was talking about like he he also moved over to EXP, and so they're recruiting for their team, and but they're recruiting in a very specific way and I really liked his perspective on it because he also comes from that same like looking at the world through the lens of relationships and so rather than recruiting transactionally right just trying mm -hmm. to get agents in the door and then you know good luck you know have fun um, <laughs> he's building <laughs> a tribe of like-minded successful producing agents mm -hmm. that all like each other have the same kind of core values and want to go kind of in the same direction uh, so that he can provide you know mastermind and consulting and and personalized help and things like that all within the broker's fee right mm -hmm. so no no fees on top of what you just pay into as being part of an exp agent but he's building his team relationally right so he's thinking about he's thinking deeply about who do I have relationships? Who would I like to build relationships? And before you bring somebody on, if I'm like, if I'm going to let somebody on my team, it's going to be someone that I want to be in relationship with. And mm. that's kind of the approach is very similar to the approach that we're taking in the sense that like you are having one on one phone calls with people to see if they resonate with you. Do they want to join it? Like, do they want to join a team where it's based on like, hey, let's have fun. Let's be successful. Let's, let's be high producing uh, and let's have fun doing it. Let's make it fun for our clients. Like that's the that's kind of the ethos and the culture that we're looking to build with our mm. team. And we want people to plug into that, that believe in that same thing. We don't want to just recruit transactionally. We want to recruit relationally. Uh, and one of the things that I admire about some of the people in my world, Frank from Viral Marketing is one of them, and it's why viral marketing exists in the form that it does. And it's why that they it's why they push people to make videos in a certain way is because he thinks of it the same way. So when he thinks about taking on new clients, his first question is, who has a relationship with these people? It's not, it's not how can I load a bunch of these into a dialer and have a bunch of like and have a bunch of overseas people call them. It's not, hey, how do I blast them with emails? It's not even, hey, how do I load up their emails into Facebook and blast them all over the place with Facebook ads driving them to a webinar? Like that's not how he thinks about it. He thinks about it in terms of like, hey, if I want to reach this, if I want to reach John, who do I know that knows John? Who do I know that already has a relationship with John that John mm -hmm. trusts? Like mm -hmm. I want John as a client. I would like to I would like to talk to John, but John has no idea who I am. So how do I connect with somebody that already knows John who can make like a high trust, high credibility introduction that puts me and John in touch? Not just as some dude that wants to talk to him, but as the but under the right context, right? So the the context under which you meet someone is very important. The context under which somebody becomes aware of you is very important. And and Gail touched on something in the comments. She said, "Stay top of mind," but how you stay top of mind is very important. The context under which you're staying in top of mind, right? You can be top of mind and you can be annoying. We don't. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I have so many comments for that. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> mostly based around you calling me, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but like Greg, Greg and I have a relationship, so I joke about it. But Greg, I do pick up your phone calls when you call because I look forward to hearing from you. You do not annoy me, although you could if you wanted to. Um, but but I, I, I admire that approach of, uh, you know, like, hey, if you want a certain type of person as a client, figure out who has relationships with that type of person already and figure out how you can get strategic, high quality introductions, and how can you introduce yourself to those people through the people that they already know and trust. Mm-hmm, 100%. I, my, my brother did an introduction for me to a guy over on the East Coast in Virginia uh, at, at a company over there, and it, when Matt and I might coach their ISA team for a couple of months to get them on board and some verbiage tweaking that we have done with another company, but it was a very simple end because of the relationship Brad had already built. My brother had built with this other company. It was basically just, uh, it was like a low ball, you know, softball pitch to me and just had to hit it out of the park. Um, but I think that like you were saying, like how you come across, uh, you know, can, can be annoying. 
like Gail, the first time she, when I went out to uh, um, uh, see meet with Hank and, and, and Gail and a bunch of the people in Kalamazoo, Michigan, uh, uh, on, uh, was it November last year? Yeah. Kalamazoo, she picked me up. Now, before that, she literally told Hank that she did not want or have time for this other human, me, in her life. She did not like me at all. Then she picked me up, and we drove, and we were inseparable for the entire weekend. Is because, you know, you, and I know what I'm doing with this, the character that I play on the show and everything else. And she had comments. Yes, Greg, you're much nicer in person, LOL. Um, it, it, it's how you come across with people, you know. And yeah. I, I do this because it's fun for me. But when you get to meet me in person, like even like uh, Chris Lockhead said that, you know, he's like, damn, Greg, it's a lot different in person. You know, much more mellow, not all over the place, like a, like a bouncy ball thrown by, by, an, by an orangutan. Just <laughs> no, it's a completely different thing. <laughs> it just reminds me of Will Ferrell's Saturday Night Live edition, audition where he's bouncing that cat toy around. Yes, that is, that is you on the show. You're very, very up, very, very energetic. Yes. Yeah, July but you know what? But people resonate with it because it, it's not the morning, mom, you know, it's not your dad's podcast. It's not like all suit and tie, you know, all straight <laughs> edge and fucking old, old, old and yes. boring and shit. But I mean, it, you know, my, that that has moved into you know the the mon Monday and the morning uh, mindset morning with motivation. With, yeah, morning. I'm trying to come Is up with a name. Morning mindset. Thing, so. I like morning mindset. Morning mindset with Greg. Yeah. With morning mindset with McDaniel. I think that's what one of the names got. got How about McDaniel's from. morning mindset? Yeah, and the MMM show. Fuck you, Eminem. Mm -hmm. I got the MMM show <laughs> three times over. Uh -huh. uh, but in, realistically, I mean, it, it's moved into the, 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 the morning me meditation mindset show. Uh, it's the calling show and it's the podcast that we do because people need energy in their lives. Mm -hmm. If you're like, welcome to the mindset show. Today we're going to talk about doing mindset meditation. Okay, everybody, get ready. Here we go. That's why I right. just meditated Here's myself to sleep. God, I just shot myself in the head, my own self in the head. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Tony thinks I'm a lot of fun. Now, go see you, Tony. That's right. Mm. Don't, don't, Tony, don't encourage him. Encourage. Encourage, <laughs> bro. <laughs> but yeah, and what's interesting, Greg, is that you, because of all the stuff that you do, because of the podcast that we do together and then your shows that you do alone, uh, you have built scalable relationships with people right where people feel like they have a relationship with you even though you may not be able to do a one-on-one -on -one call with everybody mm -hmm. however mm -hmm. what you're really good at is then taking those and 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 pulling people in from having just a passive one-way relationship with you to actually getting on a call i mean that's one of the reasons why the show took off is that you started offering to get on a call with people and there's there's over 400 plus people that have had one-on-one -on -one like McDaniel challenge intervention uh, calls with you over the, over the years. Um, <laughs> interven well, that's what they are. Uh, get, I've never thought about it. Didn't you like call that. them unfuck your, to get unfucked or something like that? Yeah. How to unfuck. How, let's, let's, let's see how, uh, let's, how to unfuck you. Yes. You know? Yes. And people are just like, I first got I like on the phone with them. I'm calls. like, so how fucked up are you and why do you need to be on this call? And people start laughing. They're like, what? I'm like, well, if you're good. You wouldn't be here. Yes, exactly. But you're right. It, it, it does develop a, a personal relationship. And, you know, like everything else on this show, I dropped that on Matt. He had no clue that was coming when I offered that. And, uh, yes. you know, and that's why we, the running joke is like, you'll never get Matt's phone number because like, like Matt's like, no, Unless no, no. Unless I hand you one of the real estate uncensored business cards, which for some reason have my phone number and not the email on it because I'm an yeah. idiot. So I got the, I got it right, right there, guys. Right. I got yeah, it right there. I got it right there, guys. We're muting your camera. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. Ah, oh. bye bye, Greg. Bye bye, Greg's camera. <laughs> Dick. Put me back on the camera. <laughs> Jeez. Yes, but the jo the running joke is that you will never get my phone number, and that's true. Um, I, I am like I have my I have my calendar pretty pretty well dialed in. Although I will say this: if you do need some strategic guidance, I am willing to jump on a fifteen minute call for for very limited time slots with people in in our audience in our tribe. They can use some guidance on, you know, maybe they're considering one of the coaches we've had on the show or one of their products or programs that we've talked about or refer people to like ERS Livestream, which is amazing. That's Two day cool a week, stuff. high def live video training on dialogue and, uh, and other common topics for agents. Uh, so like anything like that, guys, if you want um, a call with me about that sort of thing, it's 15.bookjohnson.com. 
And then I briefly mentioned the live stream program. You can check that out at erslivestream.com. Um, you know, we've got a bunch of other friends that, you know, that, that do really cool things like Aaron's Expired Mastery Elite. Um, I mean, we've done stuff with Top Producer, uh, Wise Hire, Rockstar Connect. And like, there's a bunch of stuff that we talk about on the show that you may just not be sure if it's right for you and may, maybe need some detail on it before you pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. Guys, just jump on a call. Uh, that's the best thing I can say to that. So, Greg, you, for people to talk to you, it needs to be very, very specific about mm -hmm. uh, potentially joining our team and plugging into our training and our systems and all that good stuff. If guys, if you need something different, that's where you can jump on a call with me. Yeah. Absolutely. And the only restriction is just my time, which he has tons of, so feel free to waste it. No, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit more on, on, in people that are like in my mindset, they're coming from a transactional mindset. Mm -hmm. You're moving into the relationship base and you're kind of like, I have to actually like the other person. Fuck. I can just just do a deal and use them like toilet paper, wipe and be done. Um, but that's that 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 is sustainable for a short period of time. But you have to re remember that you know the gold is going to be in the follow. It's going to be in the long term plays. You know Bob Wolf made 1.7 million dollars in Q3 of 17 by having a relationship based business. Take take guys take that 36 to life uh, that Hank offers. Um, it's usually 300. It's uh, 200 if you're not a part of our team. If you're part of our team, guys, it's only $36. Epic opportunity there for you, for any and all of you. Um, but he'll show you how to how to stay relevant to people, how to build you know lists in Facebook that you can. This is the cool part, Matt. This I learned this from Hank the other day, and I thought I knew a lot about Facebook. But what you can do is you can create specific lists in Facebook, put people into them, right? And you can create as many as you want on those lists. But when you post to that list, it'll go directly into their newsfeed. So you're gonna just basically hack the algorithm, because only about three percent of your friends will ever see anything that you do on Facebook. Right, mm -hmm. unless you get a lot of likes, a lot of interaction. Yeah. So if you can create multiple different lists, you can you know, for multiple different people, or or different like okay, so people live in Danville, people live, live in Walnut Creek, people live in Alamo, you know, high school friends, you know, ex girlfriends probably don't want to message them too much, um, you know, ex boyfriends. It, it could be it could be you know close friends, it could be acquaintances, it can be whatever you want to do. But it is something that you can really stay relevant to a very niche group of people without having to go through all the people on your Facebook feed uh, and become friends with them. You can put either fellow real estate agents, which I am, I got to create a list like that and put all the people into, I mean, 90% of my friends are fucking Facebook or, or, or real estate agents. So, you know, making new Facebook, you know, uh, you know, agents in different states, you know, go, go do all that kind of stuff. Just so you can push out referrals. If you have a referral for, you know, Florida, Great. Here are my Florida agents. Guys, I have a referral in this area. Who who gets it? Who wants it? Mm -hmm. It could be a very powerful referral tool tool right there for you. But it's all about building the trust and likability. What are you grinning for? Oh, you make several me nervous things. when you grin. So, no, several things. Um, so uh, oh, so yeah. God. So guys, book a call with Greg. Book a call with me. Um, all that good stuff. Check out erslivestream.com. Rockstar Connect, top producer. All that good stuff. Okay. Um, and Gail had a really good point that I want to address really quick, and then we got a couple of fun things to end the show on. Number one, uh, Gail <laughs> said she's seeing um, several, uh, like especially EXP agents, message her without building any relationship. Yeah, I talked to Aaron Wittenstein uh, yesterday, who, by the way, is with KW and probably has no plans to leave. So stop messaging him, uh, guys. If you're <laughs> listening to this and you're you're with EXP. Uh, Recruit relationally for the love of all that's good and holy. Do not randomly message people and go, hey, you should switch over. Uh, let's totally jump on a call. And they have no idea who you are. So by oh the way, God. that's my impression I'm gonna, of an idiot. I'm going to message Wittenstein as soon as you get the show. Hey, bud, want to talk about EXP? Yeah, this is going to be the response. Yes, exactly. Bite me. Giant, <laughs> giant middle finger. Um, and and in, in his case, maybe with good with good cause, but that's beside the point. Um, so guys, don't don't be that way. Um, Paul Paul Franklin agrees. Says, unfortunately, I believe there are some agents focus more on the MLM component uh, of of a you know of a virtual brokers and the service end. Uh, that's an industry internal issue, and potential clients hopefully won't even be aware of it. Absolutely yes. Mm -hmm. And by the way, guys, if you're recruiting. Um, whether it's for EXP or virtual brokerage or KW or whatever the case is, um, just, yeah, make sure that the, um, the, you have a value proposition that's unique. Like why should people, why should they join you? Why should they sign up to something under you versus somebody else? 
If you can't answer that question, it's really no different than you going into a listing consultation and them asking you why they should sign with you versus another agent and not having any answer for them, right? <laughs> so uh, have an answer for that. There may be, better be something about why you are recruiting and why they should be in a relationship with you and not just the brokerage, the firm, the office, or whatever that you're recruiting for. So, I mean, even down at the KW level, though, guys that are the best team leaders and recruiters that I've seen are in and of themselves great coaches. And so when people get into a relationship with them, big things happen. Adam Roach and Dave Friedman is a great example. Adam Roach is a team leader uh, and an entrepreneur out of one of the KW offices. I think it's in Ch Charleston, South Carolina. Um, so when Dave Friedman joined his office, he was doing 40 deals a year. Now he's doing 400 deals a year. Why? Whoa. It wasn't because, wasn't because of KW. Uh, as great of, com of a company as that is, it was because of the relationship with Adam Roach and the coaching that he gave, right, to Dave Friedman and the systems that they plugged into. And, of course, it was all of Dave, Dave's hard work, and I'm sure there's some other factors involved there, too. But point being, they got into a relationship, and the relationship changed the business. It wasn't that he just recruited him to a slightly better or a different brokerage. So um, Tony agrees, I only recruit people I develop a relationship with. Good. Let's keep it that way. And um, just wanted to point that out real quick. Now, here are some of the, the, the two things that I was chuckling about, Greg. So, uh, number one, uh, Kyle Wissel, who's one of the, I think he leads the biggest, um, the top selling team here in San Diego, said we had a debate at dinner last night, says when taking a shower, do you typically face toward or away from the shower head? Um, and of course, my first thought was, I don't want to know. Uh, and then I unfortunately seen Scott Solari comment both. And then I'm thinking about Scott Solari in the shower. <laughs> Nobody needs to think about that. It's horrible. That's what I was chuckling about. Uh, so that I'll leave you with that on the showering issue. And then um, Jesse Garcia, a great guest we've had on the show, the CEO of Pipeline Wizard and a, um, uh, who has a team up in Roseville, California, said, if you had to give up just one for a year, which would it be alcohol or sweets? And I know, Greg, we have wildly different answers on this. Oh, sweets, 100%. I know, and I could give up alcohol for a year and not even notice. As long as you had a cookie every time I mildly felt like having a scotch, uh, you would keep me extremely happy. Oh, my God. I, uh, no. Oh, yeah. You can take my cookies, but you can't take my booze. That's right. You I got to pry the vodka from your cold, dead hands. My cold, dead hands. That's right, which yeah. is keeping the vodka cold nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. All right, guys. Uh, that's going to do it. I, th I think we need to put a bow on this one before the show goes way off the rails. Well, oh, fuck that. We're already we're, we're, we're mentally off the rails all the time. At least oh. you are. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. So, again, go to bookmcdaniel.com. Book a 30-minute call with me. And if you want to see about joining my REXP national team, you can fly your own freak flag. Just be a part of our all of our relationships and products behind the scenes and all the value that we're going to bring to you. Um, I can explain it all there. Also, three lines of income, guys. Your commissions you're already making, the you know some some money from the from your team members, um, passive income, and then long-term stock uh, plays in EXP. So three ways of making income on one deal. So it's a it's a no-brainer whatsoever. Uh, BookMcDaniel.com. You can go to book a big Matt Johnson and uh, get some time with him. Fifteen um, dot <laughs> bookjohnson.com. I always get that wrong. I always. Uh -huh. I wonder why I got that wrong all the time. Yeah. Um, you guys, I appreciate you. You know, the reason why that uh, that we do the show is because we love you. We want to see you guys succeed. That's why we've been doing it for over three years at this point. And that's why we're going to give you guys a lot of free stuff and a lot of other cool things, um, you know, on our team. But if you never want to join us, that's cool, too. Just keep watching the show. Spread the show. Show the show to your brokers uh, and to other newer agents that need advice without having to get rape, gang raped uh, for the same information. I know Matt's eyes perked up when I said gang rape. He's like, ooh, what, what? Do you say fun? What, where? <laughs> <laughs> pretty, sure, pretty sure that's not why my eyes perked up, but okay. God. All right, guys, we're out of here. Until next time, peace out, ninjas. We go.